So if Silver Dollar City called me today and offered me a job back on the train again, would I do it? <laughs> There's something to think about. At my current job in Branson, I actually work with another former train robber. And we got talking the other day about what would happen if they called us and asked us to come back to the train and were willing to flex schedules to work around us. And we began to talk about the pluses and the minuses and would we go back and, you know, would we want to? And, and it was a interesting discussion because both of us absolutely loved our time on the train. And it became a discussion of the positives and the negatives and which outweighed it. I do want to talk about the things that would really make me consider going because there's a, a definite mix of positives and negatives. One of the first things that came up was we loved working with the kids, uh, with the public. There was just something special when you're on the train and you are a robber or a conductor you're kind of a rock star. You're a celebrity in the park because you're a character. Over at Disney, it's like being Mickey. And one of the things that was really cool is because so many of the kids love the train, they love the characters, that if you're out at the train station, you've got kids running up to you, I mean, just out of the blue, and all of a sudden you've got this kid holding onto you, hugging you. And it was, it was just one of those deals that, what's a better way to go through the day than have this kid who thinks you are the greatest thing in the world? They may not really know you, but they know your character. And that was always a really neat pick-me-up. And that would happen a few times a week. That, you know, you're just out there talking, and all of a sudden, this kid... Can I get my picture? Can I get an autograph? Yeah, we did sometimes give autographs. Can I give you a hug? And, and they just talked because they're so fascinated with the train. That was amazing. But then on the flip side of it, you also have to deal with those times when guests aren't so pleasant. You get the rude up guests, the upset ones, the ones that watch the train leave because they get there right as it's leaving and then they're mad at you because you didn't hold it for them. You know, hey, I got to stay on a schedule here because if I keep holding the train, then the train never leaves. One of the things we talked about we definitely don't miss is having to clean up when somebody got sick. Whether it was in the depot or, yes, occasionally people would get sick on the train. And then you'd have to clean it, which was never fun. We called it kitty litter. It's basically, it's like a kitty litter stuff that you throw on it. And then washing it off. And you have to run it around a couple times with that area clear because you can't put people on. And uh, Yeah, we definitely didn't miss some of that. So we enjoyed the guest interactions and playing around. But there was also some parts of it that we definitely did not enjoy. Uh, the positive generally outweighed the negative. But, yeah, it was definitely both sides of it. Um, we loved the people we worked with for the most part. I loved the daily breakfast. Going up to the employee cafeteria for about three, three and a half dollars, you could get a great meal. Uh, freshly made eggs, always cook, they can cook them to order. Bacon, pancakes, French toast. Uh, you get a nice meal, and then you sit down with a bunch of people, and you... You know, we created friendships that last a lifetime. I've got people that I ate breakfast with every day for a couple years. It's been 10 plus years. We are still friends. We still talk on a regular basis, whether it's email or chatting or, you know, or social media or whatever. But they're still friends. And I do absolutely miss that part. I miss the cheap meals. The food at the cafeteria was generally pretty good, especially breakfast. Lunches were pretty decent, too. And it was cheap. Yeah, that was wonderful. But at the same time, then there's the having to get to work. So my job that I work right now, I pull up, I walk in, and in two minutes, I'm on the clock. Silver Dollar City, it's a further drive. And then you get there and you have to plan 30 to 45 minutes before you actually start to be able to park your car, walk to the shuttle bus, ride the shuttle bus in. You Typically, you wait for the bus for a little bit. Then you can walk to where you're going to work. Then you can clock in. 30 to 45 minutes extra time you're not getting paid for. Whereas my job now, that's 30 to 45 minutes that I'm at home. 
and relaxing and sleeping. Oh, and then at the end of the day, you have to reverse the process. And for the train, it was actually even harder. There was a period of time where we could park down near where the roundhouse was. That was nice. Well, all of that has been converted now into the uh, plaza for the pumpkin festival and the new fire in the hole. So the place we used to park is gone. Can't park down there now. Which means you ride the train back to the roundhouse at the end of the night. And now you've got to walk all the way through the park to get up to where the shuttle bus picks you up. And then ride the shuttle bus. So now you're looking again 45 minutes minimum before you can even get to your car and get out to hit the road home. Hey, you scheduled for eight hours. You can actually plan on it being nine and a half hours at work just to get in and out and not getting paid for all of it. I go into my job now. It's eight hours. I don't have the extra time in and out. It's eight hours and 10 minutes. And we're like, wow, how much time do you lose there? And then the truth is you don't get eight hour shifts very often. They're typically nine or 10 hours and they're physical <laughs> and, and they're out in the weather. I'm definitely spoiled where I'm at now because I'm basically indoors. I spent half my day sitting in a nice cushy chair, watching people on a computer screen and there it's running. And honestly, my physical health, I'm not sure how much that I can actually even do. And then you're doing it for 10, 12 hours at a time. During Moonlight Madness, uh, you can have 13 to 14 hour shifts. They're long days. They're long enough that my puppy would miss me. She gets very sad when I'm not here. And a 14 hour day away from puppy, yeah, she's not going to like that. It makes for very long, exhausting days. And you get off of work and then you have that lead time. And you come home and you're just drained and worthless. You can't do anything else. I don't have that problem with my other jobs right now. I'm tired just because it's a long day, but um, I come back and I'm okay. I'm not dying like I was out at Silver Dollar City. And that was when I was in much better health. So there's definitely that. Uh, there's dealing with the weather. During summers, it's boiling hot. During winters, it's freezing cold. Uh, if it's raining, you're still out there. You still have to do the job. You're out in the rain. You're out in the snow. Yes, I've robbed trains in the snow. You have to be out in the weather to do the job because the train runs. The only time the train doesn't go is if there's lightning. Otherwise, it's running. I don't have to deal with that with my other job. I'm indoors, comfy, regardless of what the weather is outside. Whether how cold or how hot it is, I'm indoors. <laughs> there was definitely that dichotomy. Uh, but then we also start talking about the perks. Silver Dollar City has great perks uh, to be able to go see the entertainment in town, to be able to go visit the attractions, and you can do most of them free. Uh, if you can't do it free, then it's a very nice markdown. But you can do almost anything in town to show your ID and your paycheck stub, and hey, you're in, there you go, go have fun. Because they like the word of mouth that comes with it. Don't get those at my current job. There's a few I get, but not a whole lot. So I miss that. The other thing, too, is it's a pretty decent benefits package. The medical insurance is okay, but Silver Dollar City actually has its own on-staff doctor. So you can go to the Silver Dollar City doctor for nothing. Doesn't cost you anything for basic lab work and uh, things like that. Anything you can do on a regular doctor's visit, they'll do, and it costs you nothing as a Silver Dollar City employee, and your family can go see him too. So you don't have to worry about co-pays and, and all of that. So I do I do miss that, but I get insurance to my wife. <laughs> so there's some pluses there, and then basically to go see the doctor, you've got to drive out to Silver Dollar City, which is a 30 to 45, 30 to 40 minute drive. Right now, my doctor's five minutes down the road. The trade-offs. Uh, but there's there's a lot of other perks that come with Silver Dollar City, the free admissions for friends and family, not having to buy annual passes, discounts in the park, and you know things like that. So those are all nice to go along with. One of the things that definitely was a negative was Silver Dollar City really wants you available anytime. My schedule, of course, because of the other work I do, I can't do Sundays, I don't do Wednesdays. That doesn't play well with Silver Dollar City. Uh, also, if I travel, which I do for the channel, 
uh, that does not play well with them. They don't necessarily want to let you go unless they give you permission to go. And in my case, it's usually not asking for permission. It's a notification that I won't be there. My current job, oh my goodness, I love, love, love my bosses right now because I can basically tell them, you know, hey, uh, I had this thing come up for next week and I know it's a little bit late, but uh, they want me to go do this deal over here. And my boss goes, okay, no problem. They're amazing that way. You don't find that most places. Silver Dollar City, that's not going to happen. Uh, Silver Dollar City is basically, you know, hey, well, we'll let you know if you can have it off when we actually make the schedule. And depending upon who your boss is, there's a good chance you're not going to get it. That is part of it, too. When I worked on the train at Silver Dollar City, we had the most amazing group of guys. We really did. We It was just a fantastic group. I couldn't ask for a better group of guys. There are some guys out at the train right now that I do really like and get along with. Uh, when you're a train guy, you're always a train guy. We kind of joke, once a bowling, always a bowling. The train guys know each other. We know the past train robbers. We know the present ones. You get to know each other. And if it's somebody you haven't met, it's usually throwing out a couple lines and, okay, you're one of us. It can be just as simple as, up around the bend, you got nine Yankees. Ah, bowling. We kind of have a little fraternity that way. But there are a couple people out on the train now I don't know. And, you know, and I'll be honest, I do know that there is one that we rob a little. You can't get along with everybody. You do your best. I don't have that issue with where I work now. So that definitely has to play a role in it. Am I going to be enjoying it? Ultimately, what it came down to was, oh, the pay. <laughs> pay is decent. I make more money doing what I do now. I would get more hours and for about the same amount of pay. That was actually a big deal. It was like, okay, Silver Dollar City is going to be scheduling me 30, 40 hours a week. Um, I'm going to be making the same amount of money in about 25 to 30 hours at my current job. So longer hours, more exhausting work for same pay. Yes, it's a little bit more fun. Oh my goodness, is it more fun? Um, I, I love being out there, but basically what it came down to is physically and time-wise, it just didn't quite pull it for me. Uh, now, if I was younger, uh, that would definitely play a different role. If I lived a little bit closer, that play a different role. Those, that was really what it came down to, is the flexible schedule, and then uh, physically, I don't know I'm up to it. I would love love if there was ever an opportunity to do a guest day hey spend one day out robbing in the woods um, donating anything given to charity or something like that i'd do that for free for a day absolutely but i don't think it'll ever happen because i don't think insurance will allow it uh it's not what it was when i was there there's all sorts of other things and uh the legalese has stepped in I'd love to do a guest day. Guest day would be amazing. It would be fun. That'd be awesome. But it'd be a one-off. I wouldn't want to do it all the time anymore. So would I do it? It would be tempting. I, it would be tempting. But ultimately, I think the answer would be no. No, I had my time. I love my time. I would not give up that time for anything. But... I think I am content as I am now. So what would you think? Uh, if you had the opportunity to do it, would you do it? Okay, if you're younger, I would say go for it. Definitely. Uh, but I would love to hear your feedback. Positives, negatives, did I not mention something? I'd love to hear. Let me know in the comments below. I do know that there is one guy out there that I worked with who's still having an amazing time. And Huff would be just setting me up all over the place. I'd love to get out there another time with Huff. But I just don't know that I could do it several days a week anymore. But like I said, I'd love to know what you would think. Let me know your comments below. Thank you so incredibly much to my patrons, my supporters, for helping make these videos possible. I also want to give a huge shout out to my brand new patron, Cat Gardener, thank you so much for signing on. You blessed us so much at Disney World as well. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so incredibly much for watching.
God bless. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts, your comments, your suggestions, your ideas. Be sure to share them in the comments below, or you can contact me. There's information in the description that has my email address, fan pages, information about merchandise, and so much more. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to hit that like button, share the video, and if you haven't already, hit the button right up there to subscribe. And in fact, if you did enjoy this, I've even got another video for you right here. And also about these wonderful people here, those are my YouTube members and my patrons, the ones whose financial support makes this possible. I couldn't do it without them. If you want to know more about that and the perks that come with it, well, be sure to check the description. There's a link right down there. Thank you so incredibly much. God bless.